Alright, so I, I just wanted to share with you guys something um, <coughs> that basically is a side effect of um, <coughs> excuse me, the way that telecom companies have unfortunately um, managed our understanding of what um, what the technologies are, largely in order to use these things, uh, you know, our misunderstanding to you know, extract more money out of us. And I mean, for example. <coughs> If you think about the concept of a caller ID, a caller ID is actually um, <clears throat> just like a return address on an envelope. And just as a return address, you can put anything that you want there or nothing. And just as a return address, it's not illegal to do that. So if you think about it, would we get angry if somebody had put the wrong return address on a, a letter and mailed it to us? Well, we're used to this. It's called junk mail. <coughs> and, <coughs> you know, that if we know certain things and we take responsibility for them, then that's really the only way that we can guarantee that we would be if we can't sort of rely on something and then become all angry when when it didn't work out that way if we could have taken it you know sort of said this is the way it is i do what i can and what i can't do anything about also might as well not get angry about it unless you like being this is a strange thing that we see and that's um <coughs> anyways that's for another day um i just want to share with you guys today that um the voicemail indicator for example you see new voicemail. It actually is controlled um, by sending a special kind of SMS uh, to your phone. And see, when I send uh, that special kind of SMS to cancel the voicemail, for example, um, <coughs> you can see it disappears. And then I can say turn it back on, <laughs> and just to prove that you know it's actually that uh, um, me controlling it. So I turn it back on, and then you send that special kind of binary text message back, and then there it comes. And then here I'll turn it off again. <laughs> Um, <coughs> and basically you can see that um, nothing to do with whether there's an actual voicemail there or not and um, the technology behind the scenes um, the phone companies don't really tell you most of us don't really care most of the time but you can see that sometimes there could be actually uh, safety issues if they manage what our misunderstanding is and there comes a case that you know we might misunderstand something and either um, we can get angry at somebody else and say, like, hey, there's no message, but then maybe there was one, and maybe something turned it off, or um, maybe there wasn't a message, and, and um, somebody could use that to sort of draw your attention away from something, you know, whatever it is. Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to have the opportunity that you can take responsibility for knowing the way that things work, and then you can choose. Do you want to take responsibility for, um, you know, knowing this and then protecting yourself, or the way that things are, I think that's um, that's what we call free will. <laughs> <coughs> the thing is that it, it's strange that um, when I say that people like to be frustrated, it's actually because you know knowing these things, for example, <coughs> for example, knowing it's not illegal to change color ID in Canada, and that it means just as little as as um, a return address on an envelope. But there are really good reasons we should be able to technologically do it and not sort of react like the Americans have and and say, I'm going to make it. it um, illegal and sort of providers won't won't um, go through your uh, caller ID when you're making a call through PBX. For example, if you happen to be calling, uh, you know, a work call, and if you're calling for work, not at work, or <coughs> if you have a remote office and then you want to be calling from your regular uh, office phone number, or if you know, like your PBXs don't actually have phone numbers on each extension, but phone number on the call out if each extension has a different number or whatever and uh, so there are very good reasons to do it it's just that we have to take responsibility for knowing this and once we know it it's up to us to do something about it or not do something about it and what we do about it and you know it's like knowing this though people will still choose to become angry at somebody else instead for you know misleading them when they're not actually being misled <laughs> it's that you knew this uh, you knew that this was meaningless and you chose to believe it so any sort of consequence that comes from that, you knew this and you wanted to choose. The alternative is, you know, don't believe it and protect yourself from this rush, but you chose it. And this is what I meant by people, oddly, want to be free. Now, I mean, like, in, in a lot of cases, it's, it's not that odd because people are often too weak to take responsibility for it and, you know, either too lazy. To, and then when it falls in their face, or it blows up in their face, then instead of taking their own blame and saying, I should have done this, I should have known better, I didn't, I was lazy. Instead of doing that, 
a weaker person will blame another person. So you can see it's like it's not so much that they like to be frustrated, it's more like that they prefer um, not to rise to something, they prefer not to um, take responsibility for it. and the consequence of that they want to blame somebody else because they don't want to take that blame and, and, and you know, look like they didn't know what they're doing or, or look like that they're not everything that their ego thought that they were. So anyways, hopefully uh, you guys take something from that and uh, think of something else in, uh, for next time. All right.